hi everyone, uh, very happy to be here today. Um, so first, I will start my, my talk by asking you a question. Which market maker do you know? If you answer in your head with um, Alameda, the former market maker of FTX, Three Arrows Capital, or Bernard Madoff, you probably have a very bad opinion about market makers. So today, what I would like to do is to um, show you what, how market makers are critical for the efficiency of financial markets, share which approaches are ongoing today, and how we can make something better with DeFi. So first, maybe start with a quick definition. What is a market maker? So market makers are uh, middlemen that are paid to provide liquidity in a market. They, um, they are essentially essential to help you, when you want to buy an asset, avoid the pain of going through finding a seller who is willing to sell the quantity of assets that you're willing to buy at a price that you are agreed to pay. They make profits through what is called the bid and ask spread, which is essentially the, the margin that they charge. Um, market making is a very old industry. It started, uh, I mean, back in the days, it was mostly operated by merchants, uh, where you would go to, to uh, buy and sell gold, for instance. With the emergence of the stock markets, uh, it became operated by specialists. Um, so people that were focusing on some specific um, financial se securities uh, to allow people to, to buy and sell them um, at different points in time in a very efficient manner. With the, with, sorry, with the digitization of the financial markets, um, those strategies became more and more automated. Um, and so now I would say that mostly market making is uh, about like automated uh, strategies. In order to be a market maker, you require several things. So first you need uh, liquidity, so an inventory, uh, which you use for people to be able to both buy and sell your, your, uh, like their assets. Um, and then you need an infrastructure, which is composed of uh, connection to the financial markets. Um, also a quotation algorithms uh, to, to ensure that you're able to uh, price the assets in a correct manner to avoid the various market risks that you can uh, have. Um, in order to source the liquidity, market maker can operate on like in two ways, I would say. First, they can um, use their own liquidity, or they can also um, use um, like LPs. So essentially today, many market makers are funds that leverage uh, external capital and promise a return on, uh, for, for, for their LPs uh, using uh, market making. So um, this comes, however, with a few issues. Um, and the problem of those centralized market makers are essentially, I mean, I, mean, I would say that there are four main problems with, with the centralized market makers that operate in uh, the centralized financial system today. So a bit in traditional finance, are in CFI, uh, in crypto. Um, the first thing is they are not really democratic in the sense that if you want to be able to um, LP, to be an LP in a market making fund, you have first to be able to supply a significant amount of liquidity, so have a significant check size. It's not available for anyone. Um, second, you have to have co good connections with the people who are operating the strategy. Um, the second problem is that uh, market makers are opaque. They are not transparent. Why is it a problem? Because it is very hard to be able to audit um, the strategies that they are, they are doing. Um, and typically, we have two examples where this turned out uh, wrong. So the first one is uh, Alameda. So essentially, uh, Alameda was um, using the assets from FTX to practice um, like to, 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 to market make, um, and this turned out horribly wrong, of course. A second example is uh, Bernard Madoff. So um, essentially, Madoff was able to operate a hedge fund um, which promised a 12% yield on, on, uh, to, to its LPs 
using the, the inflows of new LPs. Um, if we had been able to audit the way that those people were using funds and um, use, delivering their yield, those, um, like, yeah, they would not have been able to sustain scams for so long, essentially. Uh, and when they blow up, of course, it creates massive contagion effects and has a massive impact on the economy. Um, the third aspect uh, is market makers are custodial. Um, so you face custody risks when you, when you help into a market maker. Uh, I mean, if you're a crypto native, of course, I think you would <laughs> be sensitive to that. Um, concretely, what happens is, for instance, um, there were many projects that loaned tokens to Alameda, using them as their market maker. And um, they, um, they essentially, now, now that the bankruptcy procedure is launched with Alameda, those tokens are frozen uh, into the, the, the bankruptcy procedure, and they are not able to access those assets anymore. Um, and the last thing is, is more like a missed opportunity. Um, so market making funds from LPs are not interoperable, which means that the capital is locked um, inside like the, the market making fund and cannot be used elsewhere unlike DeFi. And it's going to be a good transition to uh, another way to approach market making uh, in DeFi, which is called um, automated market makers, and which aim to solve all the problems that I mentioned. So what is an AMM? An AMM is essentially um, some code, some smart contracts that are deployed on the blockchain, and that allow uh, people to trade and provide liquidity to assets in a decentralized way on the blockchain. Essentially, you have two types of users in an AMM. You have the traders. So suppose you want to buy uh, ETH on chain. You go into an AMM and you can trade, for instance, let's say uh, USDC against ETH. You pay a commission for that. And on the other end, you have the liquidity part, because as a, rem uh, as a reminder, you need liquidity to operate uh, a market making strategy. Um, liquidity providers supply liquidity so that people are able to trade. Um, the liquidity providers expect to earn yields from providing their liquidity. The, like the way it is structured is uh, structured around liquidity pools, which are smart contracts in which uh, LPs deposit their tokens. Um, the, the LP pools are also used to price the assets. So the price is determined by the balance within uh, the pool. And AMMs have very interesting properties. The most famous AMM is, is Uniswap. Essentially, what AMMs allow um, are like several things. So first, they are completely permissionless. Anyone can LP or trade. Um, LPing and benefiting from uh, market making strategies is not uh, only for um, very advanced, uh, like for very uh, sophisticated players or for people who have a significant size. Second thing is they allow permissionless listing. So um, when you want to list a token on a centralized venue, this is a process that is very hard and that takes a lot of time and money. With AMMs, you are able to deploy tokens with very low market cap that, ca that can have liquidity and thus can incentivize with economic incentives their community uh, from the start. Then AMMs are fully transparent. You can see everything that happens on chain. You can audit the yield, what's happening, the performance. Uh, they are non-custodial, so you can withdraw your liquidity anytime and you are the only one who has access to the liquidity. And last but not least, they are composable and interoperable. What that means is that essentially the, um, the position that you have in an AMM as a liquidity provider can be used in other DeFi protocols. For instance, you can deposit um, the share, the pool share that represents your capital that is locked into an AMM into, for instance, a lending protocol and borrow against it, which uh, maximizes the capital efficiency. Um, so, however, th this comes with a big uh, caveat. Um, AMMs are not yet fully uh, efficient. Uh, so, LPs are losing billions of dollars every year on automated market makers. This has been uh, studied in different, um, in different uh, yeah, research. Uh, so there was a, um, a research paper by Bancor around uh, the impairment loss in Uniswap v3 that showed that essentially 50% of liquidity providers uh, were losing money on Uniswap v3. Uh, another study showed that essentially um, LPs on just one pool on Uniswap had a, a PNL uh, loss of 100 million. 
Um, in fact, when, when you step back, you realize that being an LP into an AMM today is, looks more like being uh, a casino uh, gambler than an investor. Uh, AMMs have, uh, as an LP, have negative expected returns with very high volatility. So in other words, you have, uh, when you LP into an AMM today, you have signif like significant chances to make a lot of money, but even higher chances to lose a lot of money. So um, that's something that we're trying to, to fight at Swap and essentially come uh, with uh, the best of both worlds. So um, what we do essentially is that we have an AMM-like infrastructure uh, so that is permissionless, transparent, non-custodial, and composable. And on top of that, we add some modules that try to correct, that aim to correct uh, what causes the lack of performance into uh, traditional AMMs. So the first thing is using more advanced uh, math, essentially. Uh, the math that is used today in traditional AMMs is very simple, and this is one of the uh, causes of uh, the lack of performance. So on our end, we use uh, stochastic-based uh, models, which are the ones used uh, in, in traditional finance. And the other aspect to it is um, the use of, um, of data, essentially. So AMMs today are completely blind to the outside world. They don't rely on external data. And that's something that we integrate as well. Um, our, um, so we have a V1 that has been live for a, a year now on Polygon, which proved that uh, on-chain profitable market making was possible. And now our V2 focusing at higher yield model models is going to go live uh, in approximately a month. Um, so yeah, so actually we are also running um, a whitelist process for people that want to um, try the solution uh, ahead and gain uh, exclusive uh, benefits. So if you want to join, uh, you can flash the QR code uh, and um, yeah, get access to the whitelist. Thank you. <laughs>